Hi, we're gonna paint Peaceful Panda today. And I provided some black and white PDFs on my blog where they've been sent to you. My blog is at craftwavesart.com. And you can print them out from there. What we wanna do is cut this out and I wanted to show you how to do that. So you'll have this drawing aid to get the right size pinned on your canvas or on your paper, if you're working with paper. We're gonna fold it in half and cut into it kind of like a snowflake, but then we're gonna open it back up and we're gonna cut out this Mickey Mouse type shape with some safe scissors, which you wanna put it in there and then cut around that inside shape where the muzzle and the eyes are gonna be and this should help you draw it to scale when you're transferring the image to your canvas. So let me finish that. And after we draw, we cut the center part out, we're gonna cut the outside edges. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just getting some drawing lines and we're gonna be painting over those lines. So now I'm gonna cut the outside part. And there's just a few spots after the outside to cut that I wanted to show you. So you wouldn't be confused when I go to draw. Mine. So I cut around the bottom of the hand and then down, down the arm. All right, so we have our scraps. We have our panda. So we finished cutting the outside edges. Now we're gonna cut a few inside edges to expose where the head meets the body and where the hands are, but we don't wanna cut all the way across. So we went ahead and cut the head just to the end of the black line here, so that, but not all the way. We wanna keep it intact. Then we can know where the head meets the body and draw a line in there. Our painting. We're gonna trace around the bottom of the hand so that this hand is separated and then we're gonna trace where this line is so we'll know where this line is. But we're not gonna go all the way, we're gonna stop here at the black line. And then we have our template to Put our panda onto our canvas, which we'll do next. Right, see? All right, so I'm all set up with my table cover down, my baby wipes, my water, brushes, pen, and I put my paint on my plate. This is what I think I'll need, but I still have my paint here if I need some more. My easel and I need glasses. So we're gonna go ahead and trace this flat. So if you just have the outline of the panda, I'm gonna put that in. You're gonna use one hand to hold him down or her and trace around. Mine's kind of going off the edge. That's okay. I'm not going to draw there. I'm not going to continue around. I want to get that elbow. And then we have this Mickey Mouse kind of shape. But it's a little bit like a puppy ear there. We're drawing that. And I'm going to lift back. The head. So remember, I didn't cut it all the way across. I just cut it around a little bit. I'm going to draw in the head. I didn't cut this all the way across. It's just cut up here. 
going to go where I opened it up and go around so I know where the arm is. It's okay if it's not perfect. We're going to paint on top. And now we have a, one more line for the other arm up to the elbow to the fingers. Here we're just missing the eyes. We're going to put the eyes in on both sides. So after we finish both eyes, then we need to add eyeballs to both eyes, little round circles, and a little nose. Just draw in a small smile underneath the nose. So we've given eyes, nose, smile, we need to connect this nose around because it's really going to be sticking out more than the eyes, right? The eyes, the nose comes out, so we want to close that in, okay? So we have this round shape that's like the muzzle of the nose and mouth, the eyes, okay? One more thing to do, I think, is close off the head and the ears. And we're starting to look more panda-like. I put a little log in front, leaning up against the log. And if you want to get fancy and draw some flowers in, you can do that. I had purple for the original drawing. I'm not sure if you have that color, so we're gonna use blue and orange, okay? We're gonna just use those colors that we have, these four, and make it work. We need to save a little bit of blue and a little bit of orange to make the brown. All right. Somewhere you can put your paint is in the, underneath the easel and turn it an option. I like to start with the white and put the white in while my brush is all clean. I don't like bare canvas. So get my baby wipes ready. So where is the white? The white is on the head all up here gonna paint in that white cover up the canvas I know the canvas is white but it needs to be covered so that it has the same sheen as the other paint and it looks complete so I'm gonna paint in all that white around on the head smooth out your lumps and your brush is not drippy wet, okay? You want a dry brush. It can have some water, but just not drippy. Watercolor has a lot of water, but this is acrylic paints. They're good on their own without water. Some techniques you may use water to dilute them but right now it's straight on. Just push this in. Don't go right up to your Sharpie. Don't worry about covering it. In the end, we really just rather not have Sharpie lines show. So don't feel bad about touching your Sharpie lines. Go right up to them. Okay, so now we have a head. So what else is white? The nose is white, okay? and inside the eyes is white. So the Sharpie is gonna show through this white, so I'm gonna just paint right on top, okay? We don't have to make this hard. We just go right on top on our muzzle, and then on our eye in here. Let's paint right on top. We're gonna see our Sharpie lines through, and we'll be able to paint those in. And the tummy, the little tummy right here above the log is white. 
So now we finished our white. I'm just gonna wipe my brush off. Then I'm gonna just swish it in the water that I have and dry it on a baby wipe a little bit so it's not drippy. The next step, I'm gonna start with my blue for my background. So I'm working a little bit, because I might wanna do one more coat and I want my edges to be dry. I'm gonna get one coat in, okay? Different paints have different consistencies and these student grade paints, which are safe for kids, need two coats. So I'm taking my flat brush, just getting that background color in. Trying to smooth out the lumpy bumpies. And really two coats can make this look a lot better. If you go into the part that's gonna be black, don't worry, you're gonna paint on top of that. I'm switching hands for this side. <laughs> don't ask me why. I guess it's good to practice. Um, gonna go here. Let's say you make a mistake and get some blue in your white. You're just gonna take your baby wipe and put it on your finger, and then that is your eraser right away before it dries, take out that blue, grab a little more white, put it on, problem solved, okay? No reason to worry about that. I'm continuing to get the background in. I suggest you paint your sides. It helps if you're not gonna frame the art to make it look better on the wall. And I'm gonna paint the top. So that's the first coat. We'll just let that sit. Otherwise, we do what I call pushing paint around and we're just moving it around and it just doesn't help. It needs to stick to the canvas. Dry it off. Another mistake people make is they get way too much paint on their brush instead of making multiple trips to grab some more paint. So I'm gonna grab some black. I had this much on my brush on the tip. and bring it up close, right over the Sharpie line. Right up to the Sharpie line here. I can't wait to see what you guys do. So, I hope you show me and you post it on my site, on Craft Waves, on Facebook, or tag me at Craft Waves on Instagram. And what's the next place? Around the eyeballs in this, if there's a black area. I suggest putting down the, the um, if you're, Flat brush is bigger to put that down and put a small brush for this area because it's a smaller area and it's hard to do the detail. Remember, these aren't perfect circles around, around the eye. They're kind of have a little, like a puppy ear, a little dip on the side. But I guess every panda might be different their markings. Okay. And around the eye. And then we're going to go over to the other one. I'm 
gonna paint around the eye. Here, the eyeball part, leaving white centers, okay? Paint the nose. If you have too much paint on your brush, you can roll it on your plate. Like this, roll it and get some paint off. And then do a thinner line like the smile. And while I have this small brush in my hand, I'm just gonna go ahead and outline. the muzzle, the nose. And I'm not liking the shape of this that much. I just want to make it a little bit more heart shaped so I can just paint that in a little bit more. Okay. I'm gonna put my, I'm gonna clean my little brush, dry it off, the round one. I switch back to the bigger one to get in the large areas of black. So when you're using the flat brush, you can use the wide side or the skinny side, okay? So you can use the skinny side, turn it sideways to get into the smaller areas. If we do it all the same color black, we won't really see much down here. It'll all fade in. So what I want to do is save a little part of the hand to put some white in my black and make it a little bit lighter. So that we can still see the hand. So I'm going right up to my Sharpie lines on the head. Really slow, there's no race. Getting those in. And if you want to wrap black around this side, you can. Okay, so you see how there's still some hand here that's not painted? Let me hold that up. I'm gonna lighten my black just a little bit and make that lighter. a little bit of white in there so see it's still black it's just lighter very very dark gray Maybe it looks a little closer to you than. And I'm gonna wrap that on the side. I'm just gonna wipe a little bit over here. 
center of his or her arm. All right. And this part's the tummy, remember, this is gonna stay wide down here. That little triangle is, is the tummy. I'm gonna wash this brush out. I'm gonna dry it off. And then there's a little bit around my flower here that I couldn't get in with a thick brush. I needed a smaller brush to put that in, okay? So what's next? Let's do one more coat of blue on the outside now that it's dried a little bit. Smooth it out. You need a third coat, you just let it dry and do the third coat and you're gonna get that more solid, even painting. Just take your time. To make something look a little bit round, it's helpful to put in a little shadow. So we, we don't have, if you, I used a little bit of like a light lavender for this, but um, to stick to the four colors, I'm gonna use blue with some white in it so that it's very light, even lighter than a baby blue, really light. You can always add more. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of shadowing just rubbing just a little bit of paint around the edges of the head so that they look farther away. And the head looks a little bit more round. I went through about half the head. It's just about, if you're good at measuring like a quarter inch in, And then a little bit on this side to make it look brown. And also on this muzzle a little bit, right here. Get that round feeling. Let me show that close. See that? The camera is not seeing it. Okay? It's a little bit of a shadow. Just my brush is dry, I'm just rubbing a little bit more in. Not a lot of paint. I'm making it just a little darker blue. And white, and I'm gonna do the flower petals. Rinse, dry, and take the orange and do the center of the flower. I'm gonna wash and rinse it. And then I wanna give a couple little eyelashes with white to my panda. 
and a little bit the idea of like some nostril or highlights on the nostrils there. Cute. Um, we're going to make a brown now for the law. So I'm gonna start with orange. I'm gonna add some blue to it. And we're just gonna make brown. And go ahead and fill in our log. We'll try to avoid the tummy area where it's white up there. Gonna wrap it around the side. You can always do the turn it upside down and do the bottom later, or if it's flat, that's easy to do the bottom. All right. So then I take a little bit of black and put in my brown. Twist my brush so there's not so much, and then I'm gonna put a couple lines through here. And I may play with this some more as it dries. Keep adding paint layers. We're really getting the start of our panda. I just want all my Sharpie lines covered up, so I'm going to paint an outline in black on top where I see Sharpie lines. and smooth out any lumps. Anywhere I've crossed over my outline. And then I think this needs a little highlighting, a little lighter gray in the very center of his hand. Let's see, that might be too light, so I take a little black. Mix it in. A little bit more black. Just want to see that hand. So acrylic painting, you can put light colors on top of dark colors and highlight, and that's the fun part of adding shades. Maybe there's some shine to the fur. There's not a lot of paint on my brush. It's just a little bit of paint. Okay. You can even do it in the ears a little bit. and feel the roundness and shape to the ears. I hope you guys have enjoyed painting Peaceful Panda. Don't forget to sign it. Um, white might be 
a color that may show here. And don't be afraid to do more than one coat and make it really solid. Thanks for painting with me.